Right guys, welcome back, Richard here. Um, so I've just taken the time to continue on and just make those links and those connections. It's not the most terrifically exciting thing to see on video after we went through it once. Uh, it is just literally dragging parameters around. And also you can see I've added the exact same texture map to um, the brick chips uh, just because I'm lazy. Uh, and also I've found a grout material, uh, which is just an, uh, another tiling kind of stony type texture uh, just to fill in those gaps there. So we're ready to press on and configure these two inputs here. Uh, but before we do, just to recap some of the other parameters, the UV scale that we set up, you can see is working very nicely. I've set that down to 0.5 just so we've got some nice variation in there. And you can see even in the unlit state, it's, you know, we're starting to see some of the normal information coming through. Um, if you really want to sort of see it in the OpenGL viewport, what I'd recommend you do is temporarily drop down an environment light. So just hold control, click, put down an environment light, um, plug in your favorite um, HDRI, and then turn on high quality lighting with shadows. Okay, so you can start to really see the effect that that's having now um, on our on our wall system. So if we rotate that light around, you can see how it's picking up the uh, the normal information really nicely there. All right, so let's press on with our brick wall. What we need to do is to make our tool functional, this first input needs to be able to accept a curve input. Okay, so let's just, for testing purposes, just drop down to the top viewport. So that's space two. Okay, and we want to draw just any old random curve here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to create this curve within this network, within this context. So I'm going to enable create in context, just so it doesn't create it at object level. Okay, and then I'm going to click on uh, curve and then just randomly draw out a curve, okay? So when you're doing your scene layout, this could be, you know, the, the, the edge of, I don't know, however you configure your scene, um, but the ability to draw out just a simple curve and have it populate with a wall is, is sort of, you know, that's the, the, the whole point why, we, why we're here really to generate these procedural assets. So what we need to do when the end user plugs in the curve we want to stop using this uh, default which is set using these parameters and we want it to automatically switch to use this one okay so we can do that quite simply if we jump into our digital asset I'm just gonna make some room and right at the very very top where we establish our um, baseline width and baseline height Okay, we want to take advantage of this incoming input here. All right, so we can switch between them. Okay, so I'm going to plug in sub network input one into the switch, and I'm also going to take this line width into that switch as well. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to the, uh, the input order here. So input zero, is currently nothing because nothing's plugged into it. All right, so there's nothing going in there. So that's why we're getting this error. If we switch it to input one, we're getting our baseline back. Okay, now we need to find a way procedurally to do that switching for us automatically. Okay, so what we can do is in the select input, we can go and edit the expression. So right click on the parameter and go to edit expression and that will bring up this expression editor here. Now what we want to do is we want to look at that input and just see if it's got something in it. If there is something there then we want to use it. If there's nothing there then we want to revert back to our defaults. Okay, so there's a couple of um, Houdini script expressions that we can use to, uh, to do that. And I'm just going to demonstrate another uh, good way of, uh, that really helps me when I'm trying to debug or trying to learn from other people's uh, procedural assets. And that is the use of Textport. So in the viewport here, I'm just gonna click on the little plus and go all the way down to the MISC tab and bring up the Textport here. Okay, now this is going to 
looks quite scary at first, almost like a command line type interface, but this gives you access to all the Houdini script expressions in there. So the first thing we're going to look at, we're going to type X help to get some uh, to help on it, is op input path. All right, so I'm going to type op input path. And this is going to give me a little bit of help about what the op input path does. Okay. And what it's going to do, what we're interested in, is return the full node, the full path of the node connected to a given input. Okay. So obviously the, the, the input we're interested in is that first input of our digital asset. If there is a path there, we want to use it. If there's not a path there, then we want to revert to our default. So in the expression editor, let's make a start on an if statement. So if, so it's a condition, remember we're trying to decide if something is there, do this, if not, do that. So we're gonna open up an if statement and the function we're going to use is called string compare and it's strcmp, okay. Now again, in our text port, let's just do x help strcmp, okay. And this compares two strings, okay. But interestingly, it returns a, a value of one or a value of zero, or in some cases, minus one, okay? So this is gonna be really helpful in our switch statement, okay? So if it's true, if these strings match, it'll return a one. If they don't match, it's going to return a zero, okay? So the two strings we need to match are that op input path, okay? Now, op input path takes two parameters, the name and the index, okay? So the, the name of the node that we're interested in, well, it's the parent node. It's the, it's the parent of the node that we're currently working on. So we can use the shortcut, just dot. That's the parent node of the node that we're currently in. And if we look at our network view, this node's parent is brick wall build, which is where our input sits, isn't it? So we can reference that and the index is the number of the input. Well, we've got an input zero and an input one. We're currently interested in input zero, okay? So that's our first string to compare, all right? So if that returns something and we compare it to nothing, <laughs> trust me, this does make sense. We're comparing the string to nothing, all right? So if there's nothing there, this will return a different value, remember? And I know this is kind of, could be quite confusing, but ultimately all we're doing is comparing two things. We're comparing something and potentially nothing, <laughs> okay? So if this evaluates to nothing, it will equal true because it equals this, all right? Trust me, it will all make sense once we, once we get through it. All right, so we can close off that string comp statement. So we're comparing those two values there. So now we're into the if statement. So if this equals true in that there is nothing there, then we can return an output value of zero, okay? Otherwise return one. So that will plug those values directly into this switch here. Okay, so if we hit apply and we can see that has made that and you can see the value is currently set to one okay because there's nothing plugged in to the input all right so if we jump up a level and we can jump back to our scene view and close out this expression window all right and just to keep things moving along i'm going to turn on our build mode on our digital asset so now what should happen when we plug in our curve that string compare will not equal nothing anymore and it'll make the switch accordingly. So if we plug that in <laughs> and make the connection to the switch node, remember we need to continue on here. So we can now disconnect this line width from here, plug it directly into the switch and go all the way back down with the display flag to our output. There we go. 
Okay, so now we're starting to make some progress and you can see all our parameters are working, the cracking and the and the noise on the bricks. So we're starting to make some real progress here. Let's just do another kind of more advanced sort of test. So we'll put down a circle and we'll lay it flat on the origin. We'll make it, you know, quite big. So castle wall, say, maybe, I don't know, seven meters maybe. Um, divisions will leave as is so we've got something like that and let's just test if that works if it automatically does that switching for us so we'll disconnect this one put the display flag on we're back to our default and let's plug in the circle and let's see what this does there we go we're starting to get a functioning tool now where we can really start to mix it up and create some interesting shapes and variety and don't forget we've got all these parameters that we can play around with still we can mess around with the number of rows to get a really interesting and unique look every time we um, every time we use this tool we've got a little bit of an error here but that's easily fixed if we come to the circle we don't want it to be a closed arc we want that to be an open arc and that should hopefully fix that there we go all right, so that's the first section of our uh, tool complete. In the next video, what we're going to do is complete this second input here. And what we want to happen is a very, very similar thing. If this input doesn't have anything connected to it, we want to do something. But if there is something connected to it, then we want to take a different path down that switch node and remove some bricks selectively. Okay, so that'll be the next video. Thanks for watching. Do the YouTube stuff. Um, like, comment, subscribe, I think I'm supposed to say. Um, and yeah, if you find a better way to do it, please let me know in the comments, you know, because I'm still learning. I'm still trying to find cool ways of doing stuff and it's always great to hear from you guys. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.